In earlier lectures, we discussed how voltage is generated in DC accelerators. Uh, there, are, uh, as I mentioned, there are three types of DC accelerators. One is uh, Cockroft Walton, Van de Graaff accelerator, tandem, and Peloton accelerators. In the case of uh, Cockroft Walton, the voltage is generated by charging and discharging of capacitors. In the case of Van de Graaff accelerator and initially in tandem accelerators, the voltage was generated by charging the capacitor formed by the high voltage terminal and the uh, high pressure pressure vessel. In the case of Peloton, however, the voltage is generated by a much better uh, charging system that is called inductive charging system. And although I have discussed this in last lecture, but I would like to give some more details of this inductive charging in, in this lecture also. So here is the uh, details of inductive charging in the case of pelotons. Uh, basically, in the peloton accelerators, you can see that uh, there is no contact of uh, high voltage with the charging systems and uh, there is a pellet chain which consists of metallic pellets connected by the nylon insulators. So if you want to understand the principle of this uh, inductive charging, you can see here Suppose there are uh, two cylinders, metallic spheres A and B and as they are uh, metallic, so uh, positive and negative uh, charges are there on both of them and they are neutral basically. Now you put a electrode here where you can later on apply the voltage. Now if you want to transfer positive charge then you have to apply negative voltage on this uh, inductive uh, system. So what you do is that uh, if you apply negative voltage on this uh, inductor, then the charge is in this first sphere. The positive charge will go to this side and that will be collected here and the negative charge will be repelled because of negative potential and that will be generated, that will be collected here in this case. Now if you bring this second sphere which was neutral earlier close to the first one after applying the negative voltage and come in contact with them then because they are metallic spheres so this negative charge, this negative charge will be transferred to this and the third stage is that if you remove this second sphere, metallic sphere, then these two spheres are separated. Positive charge on the first sphere will be uniformly distributed and the negative charge on the second sphere. So this will be the condition number three. Now if you ground this second metallic sphere, which is the condition number four, you can see that you can ground it then this negative charge will go to the ground but still negative voltage is applied to the inductive electrode <coughs> so this positive charge will remain on the first sphere and it will be uniformly distributed however there is no charge negative charge on the second sphere is gone to the ground now this first sphere which is representing this uh, pellet chain is moving with a speed while the second sphere is stationary and that is representing this, this pulley which is grounded now. So what will happen because this negative voltage is still on when this is moving the positive charge will remain here and the second one second sphere the will electrons have moved to the ground. So this first sphere 
will carry the positive charge and will be taken to the high voltage terminal. Now, as I explained in earlier lectures, that if you want to transfer this positive charge to the high voltage terminal, you have to put extra work because now you are moving this charge against the high voltage and therefore uh, you have to put extra work and that is done by this grounded pulley at the ground. So this positive charge goes to this and this is how it will happen. This positive charge will go to the high voltage terminal and then in the terminal there is a pickup pulley here and above that there is a suppressor. So this pulley, pickup pulley will pick, the, will pick up some charge, positive charge and it is connected to the second inductive uh, inductor here you can see is inductive. So that means as a consequence of that the second inductor will this inductor will get positively charged, slightly positively charged and rest of the charge will go to this pulley here <coughs> and there is a suppressor which does not allow any sparking because this uh, second conductor this suppressor is connected to a pickup charge here pickup pulley here which is picking up negative charge which is coming in the second one so there are two pickup pulleys one and two one and two and uh, this is inductor and this is suppressor so there is one more suppressor here because this negative charge is coming down pellet chain comes in contact with the pulley there will be sparking so in order to suppress that there is a suppressor here and as a consequence of this because of these two suppressors one here in the high voltage and other one here which is applied around 50 kV and uh, as a consequence of that there is no sparking either at this place or this place due to charge movement. And then of course uh, when the charge goes to the terminal is connected to the this high voltage uh, pulley is connected to the high voltage terminal here and the charge is transferred to this high voltage terminal. It is initially it is, uh, transferred to the inside surface of this but as you know that uh, by uh, this charge cannot remain inside a uh, metallic conductor so it appears outside so this positive charge goes to the high voltage terminal here and this this forms this high voltage terminal forms is a capacitor because of uh, this whole thing is put inside a inside a, uh, a pressure vessel which is grounded in the case of uh, um, so this is forms a capacitor so as per the formula uh, q by c is equal to voltage so voltage on this high voltage terminal will be raised so this is the inductive charging now the advantage of this inductive charging is that uh, first there is no contact with the high voltage Secondly, because we are using the metallic pellets and therefore charge will be uniformly distributed and therefore there will not be any non-uniformity of charge and therefore charge will be uniformly transferred to the high voltage terminal and this will lead to a better stability of the voltage. Third thing is that since it is metallic uh, uh, pellets are metals and therefore there is no formation of lints etc and therefore uh, there is no high gradient form on the as was the case in the uh, in the belt charging here it is uniformly going so much better stability can be achieved in the case of inductive charging and that is what is done in the case of pellets and uh, nowadays uh, some of the tandem accelerators are uh, also using this and the difference between tandem and the peloton was because of charging only so, so those tandems which are getting converted uh, into pelotons because of this inductive charging their stability is also improved. These uh, details are given in this uh, 
NEC because these pallettons are manufactured by NEC, National Electrostatic Corporation, USA. And you can see that these some details are given here. So this is these are the some of the details which I thought I should uh, tell you about uh, in slightly more details. Now today we are going to discuss uh, lecture number five, and uh, which is voltage measurement in st is stabilization. Now uh, now in earlier lectures I have talked about how the voltage is generated in the case of uh, tandem or Venn diagram or but this has to be measured because and this has to be measured accurately the voltage defines the energy of the particle and uh, energy should be fixed uh, and therefore uh, the voltage also should be fixed because voltage is charge times uh, the uh, the energy charge times the voltage uh, charge state times the voltage into e and uh, this has to be done properly and if there is any variation in the voltage then they should be stabilized so we have to incorporate a stabilization system also which will uh, correct the any change it will bring back the voltage to the uh, original value if there is any change so the circuit should be such that it stabilizes the voltage properly so as I mentioned that uh, in DC accelerators which are Cockroft, Walton, Van de Graaff, Tandem or Pelotons, three processes are involved. First was voltage generation and that uh, in the case of uh, Cockroft, Walton it was charging and discharging of the capacitors and uh, the voltage is uh, generated by this formula when Q is the charge transfer to the capacitor that is high voltage then you have to measure the voltage and uh, uh, in early days main source of uh, main method which was used for measurement of voltage was generating voltmeter in the beginning it was not very accurate and therefore it was not really uh, used to measure the voltages and hence not used for the experiments but later on now with the advancement of technology uh, even better GVMs have been built and uh, they also are very accurate ones. Then the next thing is voltage is stabilization and as I said that if there is any change either the voltage is slightly increasing or decreasing it should be correct back. So there should be a, some feedback system and uh, the system which uses feedback uh, is called corona stabilization or the generating voltmeter uh, stabilization system uh, so it has to be corrected and these are the uh, these are some of the systems which are for example this is the uh, cockroach walton and uh, this is shown the picture of that cockroach uh, 1 million volt cockroach walton at the tata institute of fundamental research this is wendy graf and uh, this is uh, 2 MBV tandem accelerator at BRC which was and then the peloton at TIFR. So these are some of the uh, uh, accelerating systems, accelerators uh, which are DC type and uh, in that one it is necessary that uh, voltage is stabilized and energy is known for uh, uh, very accurately. Now voltage measurements as I said is done was done earlier with generating voltmeter or we call it GVM and uh, another method which is which can be used but is uh, depends on uh, various parameters is using current through the resistor chain. You can see that uh, the voltage gradient is uh, may, uh, established through a resistor chain and suppose the total resistance is R and I is the current. So in the last one you can put a uh, current meter. So the I is the current total then voltage can be calculated. 
Now the accuracy of this voltage will depend on how accurate are the resistances. So normally accuracy of the resistance is 5 to 10 percent and therefore there will be error in the voltage of that order. And therefore uh, we, we, should, uh, we should have the very good quality resistances if you want very accurate voltages. Of course once we know the voltage then we can calculate the energy which is E is equal to Q times V where Q is the charge and V is the voltage. So let me just uh, reiterate that uh, what are the things involved. So voltage measurements and in calibration and stabilization is a fundamental problem for precise knowledge of nuclear energy constants which are used for nuclear uh, uh, reaction studies or any 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 experiment so this is so what you have to do you see you cannot measure the voltage directly because they are very high voltage several million volts and therefore you have to you have to uh, calibrate it with respect to standard sources and that calibration can have some errors so but you need precise uh, knowledge of uh, energy and uh, for that you have to know the precise knowledge of um, nuclear energy constants. The generating voltmeter has been used to measure the terminal voltage in DC accelerators for very very long time. Initially it was used uh, even to measure the energy but uh, as I said that that may involve some errors and therefore that voltage nowadays the voltage measured using D GBM is used only to get an idea about the voltage plus uh, to avoid the corona discharges and things like or the breakdowns. So but this has been used for very long time and even today it is used uh, uh, very effectively and therefore I will give little more details of that uh, uh, GVM, how it functions and uh, how accurately it can be used and therefore uh, I will like to talk about the working principle of this GBM because it, that is popular even today uh, although uh, some better methods are available like uh, you can calculate the energy through uh, nuclear reactions, resonances and uh, uh, threshold Newton experiments and things like that. But uh, this is still very useful it gives fairly accurate uh, uh, although in the beginning there were more errors but now with the advancement of technology GBMs, good quality GBMs giving accurate value of, uh, of uh, voltages have been uh, are built and uh, therefore is uh, fairly good uh, voltage value can be taken from that can be achieved. So in GBM what happens? A static charge is induced on an insulated matter plate or we call it veil mounted on the outer vessel. As I said that the outer vessel together the high voltage terminal forms the capacitor. So this and outer vessel is grounded. So this GBM is mounted on the outer vessel or we call it pressure vessel and uh, that is surrounding the high voltage uh, terminal. The magnitude now once you have high voltage here and there is a uh, vein here definitely there will be an electric field and uh, there will be a induced charge. So the magnitude of this induced charge is determined by the electric field established by the high voltage terminal on the vein. So this uh, 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 the last one is uh, there are several veins and the last one is grounded just before that it is insulated and uh, uh, voltage uh, uh, the charge is collected on that and that is rectified and uh, we measure the current and then the voltage is measured through that. So high voltage terminal on the vein. So this is magnitude of induced charge on that one. It determines the, and uh, the charge induced depends on what is the electric field and electric field depends on the voltage so you get voltage value from this uh, 
current which you are measuring the uh, due to charge collected on that wind an insulated wind rotates set now how this is how this is happening will be explained so there is a insulated wind which rotates at a constant uh, a speed behind a uh, grounded shield shaped uh, so that the wind is covered during the half of its travel so what you happen suppose you take the uh, two wings so this is fixed and uh, this is rotating so let's say these are uh, these are slots so when these slots are matching with the slot in the stationary one then there will be a electric field seen by the uh, another wing which is behind it behind both of them now as and since this is rotating so as soon as it go, goes out of the phase then the, there will not be any electric field seen by this uh, plate so that is what uh, is happening so this is rotating so uh, depending upon what is the speed uh, there will be a charge collected so you can see here that uh, uh, there are four electrodes which are shown here you can see here first one is this is the source or uh, corresponding to this and where we want to measure the uh, voltage so this is like high voltage terminal now you see high voltage terminal is not touching any of them so the gvm is a system which is not uh, none of the components are touching the high voltage so this is a electrode uh, this is a vein uh, or uh, equivalent to high voltage source then there is a rotor which is this one uh, and then there is a stator and there are fixed electrodes so you can see here there is a uh, uh, rotor a stator and this is a phase so this actually opening is almost uh, all very close to it but it's not touching the shaft so there is a shaft here is passing through this and uh, it is uh, it is rotating this rotor is rotating this rotor and this is by a synchronous motor because the speed has to be fixed and it has to match because it has to go out it has to be in phase rotor has to be in phase with the uh, stator and out of phase so in the phase means uh, that it is electric field is seen and when it is out of phase it is blocked and therefore there will not be electric so these are uh, metallic disc sort of thing with slots so this is the high voltage short there is no slot here this is slots this is identical slots and this is rotating and this is fixed and this is a fixed electrode oil, which is uh, uh, which we mount on the now one good part of it is that there is no physical contact between high voltage and rest of the circuit that's the beauty of it so it's like induction and synchronous motor is used shaft holding rotor disc only now how the voltage measurement is done now let us uh, try to analyze it so we know that q is equal to cv that means charge induced on that is proportional to the voltage because the electric field is proportional to the voltage distance etc and therefore charge induced on the plate or the disc is proportional to the voltage which you are you want to measure so charge is the uh, is uh, q is the charge is stored in a capacitor of uh, capacitance c and v is the voltage de developed across that uh, high voltage term. now as i said that uh, rotor is rotating so that means the c or the capacitance value will keep changing and it since it is rotated by a uh, synchronous motor so this the c can be assumed to be uh, uh, varying in a certain manner so there will be fixed value plus there will be let's say sinusoidal component added to this so c is varying with time then the current passing through the capacitor is given by 
i is equal to dq by dt and q is nothing but uh, q is nothing but c into v and therefore it becomes uh, v into dc by dt plus c into dv by dt so now uh, so this is the current uh, which will flow based on the, these these two values now in the case of dc accelerator the voltage has to be fixed uh, so and the variation is very little and ideally you would like to see that the voltage is constant so if the voltage is constant then dv by dt the time variation of this is uh, equal to zero so for the sake of analysis we can put dv by dt is equal to zero although it will not be zero it will have a very small number uh, because that is what we want to stabilize it so but to the first approximation to the first order it will be dv by dt will be zero now let us say if c varies as c naught that is a constant value plus cm sin omega t and uh, here this variation this addition to this is because is rotating and is both when the whenever slots are matching then the this there will be a variation in this so that means c varies at like this now that if this is the how this uh, capacitance is uh, varying then the current can be written as current is equal to v into dy dt of c not plus cm sin omega t now cm is the peak value of this and when you when you differentiate it since c not is constant we are taking that that's the constant value and uh, over and above there is a variation and that variation is shown by this so that means d by dt of this c not will be zero and therefore the i will be equal to v into cm which is a maximum value of that into omega cos omega t and this you can write as im that is a maximum so this becomes i m maximum current cos omega t so this becomes the im that is the maximum value this is a peak current and omega is the angular frequency in radian per second and it is given by here and n is the rpm of the motor synchronous motor which is which we are using now if you see <coughs> then the rms current which we measure is nothing but im divided by root 2 and therefore im will be root 2 times i rms and that is uh, this im is shown to be here so this is im so that means v the voltage which you are uh, trying to measure is nothing but root 2 times i rms into cm into mega or you can say that here uh, the voltage is proportional to i rms and that rms value of that voltage we are measuring through a meter or something but once it is proportional that means see ultimately what you are doing is you are measuring the current and which is a root mean square value of the current and that is proportional to the that is uh, v is proportional to that means you have to calibrate it you have to calibrate this values uh, with known sources <coughs> and these known sources will depend this calibration constant will depend on several uh, parameters like geometry of the voltage source and etc many more parameters and hence the proportionality constant may not be very accurate and you cannot so normally when you are calibrating it you normally calibrate calibrate at lower voltages and try to extrapolate it to the high voltage because ultimately you are measuring the high voltages and the constant obtained at low voltage may not be very accurate 
or will not be usable at high voltages. So this has to be taken into account. The alternating electrostatic voltage induced in the vein is amplified and rectified. Its magnitude is a measure of the terminal potential, but calibration with known sources is required and that is what may involve some errors. So in this uh, method, uh, geometry plays a very important role. The geometry of the system limits the precision of the calibration constant from the calculation of the capacitance. So there may be some error in the calculation of the capacitance itself because geometry of the high voltage terminal may be slightly different or may you have to and the electric field also what I mean is that suppose the geometry is uh, let's say normally as I showed that uh, high voltage uh, terminally let's say like this is a cylinder and here we are using uh, this GVM GVM and uh, the electric field from this let's say this is a very small portion now uh, elect which is used for this taking the charge then the electric field coming from different places will be different and therefore this may add to some uh, errors also the if the geometry in some cases it may be cylindric hemisphere or in some cases it may be uh, cylinders or even combination of that and therefore uh, uh, you have to be very careful when you are using those constants which are uh, which are uh, used for measuring the voltage. So geometry has to be properly defined and uh, finding in finding the calculations of capacitance and uh, constants. And here the most serious limitation is the distortion of electric fields as I explained just now due to corona discharge from the terminal. See we are handling now high voltages. So there will always be some uh, uh, corona formation. So once there is a corona formation there will be uh, distortion in the electric field. And this electric field may vary slightly and uh, that electric field is responsible for inducing the charge. So once there is a variation or uh, in the electric field itself, then there will be a variation in the charge induced and hence the current which we are measuring. And so this may add to some errors. <coughs> Voltage scale is usually calibrated, calibrated against uh, some other standard potentials normally at lower voltages. This I have, uh, I have repeatedly said that uh, your calibrations are normally then at lower voltages and you are trying to extrapolate it to what? Say for example, suppose you take a DC accelerator with 10 million volts or 20 million volts. Then you can't measure this, uh, this uh, very accurately. You can measure the, the really generating voltmeter because their distance also will be large. But uh, the, there will be some errors involved in it. So we have to be very, very careful and therefore uh, some other good method has to be has to be used to uh, to find the energies of the particle which you are going to use in the experiments.